So I'm spending the day hanging around Vicksburg, historic Vicksburg, Mississippi. And I wanted to show you one of seven ironclad battleships that were built and used by the Union Army during the Civil War. Check that out. This is the USS Cairo. It was hit by a mine on December 12, 1862 and sunk into the Yazoo River in Mississippi where it remained for 102 years before it was discovered and raised. All of the old wood that you see is original to the ship and the rest of it, the, the new wood that you see is in place for structural support and also to show the original design. There's actually quite a lot of original wood and equipment that survived. So ironclads like the USS Cairo came equipped with 13 heavy cannons and it took a crew of six men to position and fire each gun. As Cairo prowled the rivers north of Vicksburg, it could use its cannon to pound Confederate forts, battle enemy gunboats, and sink shipments of supplies headed to Confederate armies. So all the actual cannons that you're seeing on the Cairo are original to it. The cradles that they're sitting in, those black cradles with the wheels, are all reproductions. Obviously they were, you know, rotted away pretty good because they were sitting in water for over a hundred years. They do have some of them that were saved, or what was left of them, but they're inside in a protected area. Uh, there's a couple, I think there's at least one on display in the small museum that's here too. The Cairo was 175 feet long. Must have been very intimidating seeing these ironclads come down the river. So this gaping hole here, this damage is where the Cairo was hit with a mine. Back then in the Civil War days, mines were called torpedoes. So it was torpedoed right there. And um, I'm not really sure exactly how that played out. Some say that the Confederates detonated it from the shores and some say that it was detonated by small boats where they pulled the mine close to the ship and set it off that way. These big tall wooden stacks here represent the original chimneys when Cairo sank, the smokestacks were still visible above the surface. And another ship, the sister boat, the Pittsburgh, knocked down the Cairo's chimneys to hide the location from the Confederates. These seven boats were so alike that they had different painting or different designs on their chimneys, so Cairo actually got a gray band on the top of their chimneys. So that's why you're seeing the gray band up there. And now coming aboard. Jeez. What a beautiful job recreating this, putting this back together again. These are the boilers and a steam drum. Amazing. So looking down there is just one of the restored fireboxes Coal shoveled into the fireboxes, heated the boilers. Steam from the boilers powered Cairo's engines and drove her paddle wheel. A gunboat without steam could not move and was helpless if attacked. Ironclads kept fires burning and steam pressure built up even when anchored. For hours on end, coal heavers piled coal from storage bunkers into the fire room 
and firemen fed the fuel into each boiler's firebox. So up here is the pilot house. Look at that. Jeez. The circle of sloping iron plates overhead shielded Cairo's pilot house. From this exposed perch atop the upper deck, the pilot steered the gunboat and the officer on duty kept a watchful eye on the river. That is amazing. This thing is called a capstan and it was basically a very powerful winch that helped the crew move huge guns and even lift and lower the anchor. It was powered by the steam engines, but in an emergency, it would have to be turned by hand using wooden spokes inserted into the hub. Backbreaking work. By far my favorite part is all the original beams and rotted wood down there. There are four of these ironclads on display in the U.S., but this one is in far better condition than the others. Cairo was submerged in the mud, which helped preserve quite a lot more than the other three ships. It was located in 1956 and finally raised in 1964, brought to a shipyard and was restored and reconstructed as best as possible. This is an oscillating arm. The pistons pushed oscillating arms that turned the paddle wheel. At full speed, Cairo's engines could move the 888 ton gunboat at about nine miles per hour. So you can see the oscillating arm there. It's uh, reinforced with metal, but it's that huge wooden piece that connects to the piston down here. Look at that. The paddle wheel was not armor plated, believe it or not. It was very vulnerable to cannon fire. The sign here says, Cairo's 15 foot wide paddle wheel is made up of four 22 foot diameter spiders, the web like iron arms and circles that form the spokes of the wheel. I mean, when you really start looking at it, there is a good amount left. You can see all the ribs, the flooring. Incredible how much actually has survived all this time. And this is obviously what gives these ships the ironclad name. So they were built out of wood and steel, but they had this huge, thick pieces of iron for protection. An interesting fact about the recovery process is the ship was so heavy and the wood was so weak from being in the water for over a hundred years that simply lifting it out of the river would have ripped it apart. Uh, the ship had to be cut into three huge sections and from there it was placed on barges and brought to the shipyard for its reconstruction. So when you come here, there's a small museum here as well, which shows some artifacts from the Civil War and I believe stuff that they found at the site where they found this at the bottom of the Yazoo River. So this has been your tour of the Cairo, one of seven ironclad ships that were built and used in the Civil War. Incredible history here in Vicksburg. All right, get back on the road and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.